Howdy, everyone. My name's Nicholas, and welcome to the Headliner Pod Pod. We're a show about podcasters featuring podcasts by podcasters that's hosted by people that help podcasters with their podcasting. On each episode, a few of the folks over at Headliner sit down to play a game that centers around listening to randomly selected clips from over 500 show submissions we've gotten from podcasters. Why? Well, in order to find what we're calling Pod Zero. Here are the rules. Each contestant will hear a 60-second podcast clip. They'll then need to pick out the correct podcast title from a lineup of three choices before being shown the artwork for that show. Before we get the show on the road, though, let's say hi to each of our contestants for today. Starting with Max. Hey, hey headliners. <laughs> Every week we just add a couple more ERs to the end. I'm here for it. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we have Christy as well. Um, Let's go. And Jesse. Great. Those are our contestants for today. Unfortunately, Pratik and Oliver decided they were too cool for school. They're pulling a Ferris Bueller's day off. And we also have Alyssa as our producer. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. So, Alyssa, word on the street is that you have a teensy-weensy update for us about what's going on over at Headliner. Yes. Um, I wouldn't say it's tiny, though. It's it's kind of big. But anyways. Ooh. You've just called me out on not reading it ahead of time. Well, you know, pays to be prepared sometimes, Nicholas, but that's fine. Oh, um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> shots fired. Oh, okay. we went there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, ring in the new year with new ways to market your podcast. Yep, you heard it here. One of our top most requested features is now live. Eddie's podcast promo pack now includes both newsletter and blog copy. Create more personalized messages to your followers and create long-form content to boost your podcast SEO in one fell swoop with the podcast promo pack. To download your podcast promo pack, simply visit eddie.headliner.app, upload video or audio, wait a minute while we transcribe, and then download your promo pack upon export. It's totally easy and totally free. Awesome. I actually do wish I read that ahead of time because it would have come in handy for me. So now that we have that enchanting information out of the way let's just dive right into things max you're up at bat first and yeah you know how this works cover your hey, eyes that's for first huh yeah, sure whatever whatever gets you to cover your eyes bud <laughs> sorry guys uh it sucks to follow me i know i always get them all right you know yeah tough act to follow let's do this I can literally see christy shaking in his boots i mean yeah. he's wearing boots which is a bit odd he's in his house but you know I'm not, not wearing boots. How do you know that, Nicholas? You live in Nashville. Why aren't you wearing boots? <laughs> <True>. <laughs> There's so many things wrong with what I said, apparently. Um, Max, it's my business to know who's wearing boots or not and if they're shaking in them. Do you know what you're wearing? Right? Boots, if I was wearing boots, I would be. I am just shaking <laughs> naked feet right now. There you go. And Max Converse, Chucks, All Stars. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That could not be more wrong. Okay. Dang it. <laughs> let's just let's... to be on this uh, on the other side now. Well, I'm used to being wrong about most things. So honestly, quite comforting. Oh, let's good. uh good. let's get this clip rolling good. while I lick my wounds off camera. I almost went and, and sought that degree because I was looking for an affirmation of how I was already thinking about things. And, and back in those days, public accounting was very much a let's point out what everybody does wrong and not point out what everybody does right. And that's a shame because, you know, if, if you come into work every day and you're, you know, you want to hide under your desk because every work product you turn out is just returned to you with a list of things you did wrong. After a while, you're not going to want to show up. Of course. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I received that degree. I learned a host of things about myself, a host of things about the psychology world in general, and a host of things about how to take what you learn in psychology and apply it to the business world as a whole and, and to your everyday life at your own job and, and reading other people and understanding where somebody else is coming from and understanding that if somebody's having a bad day, that that's not a reflection on, on you as a person necessarily, you know? All right. There was your clip, Max. I hope you nice. have some idea of what it's about. And so, here are your choices. 
Choice number one is the cash flow show. Number two, the cash in cash out show with P.W. Tyler. And number three, the checks and balances show. I mean, I just want to go with number one because of the rhythm of it. I know you. there's the other tricks in it. There's a name in the other two. It's usually mm-hmm. like it's been a hint, I guess, of that that title wasn't made up. Now maybe it's flipped. I don't know. I like the rhythm of the cash flow show. I feel like once again, they're all they all apply, you know, so I could see the show going either way with any of those. <laughs> Okay. That's interesting. You really, you really accounted for everything there. The cash flow show is, thank you. If nobody laughed, I was actually going to just bawl (laughs) my eyes out. (laughs) Um, good one. You're, you, you are correct. It was a good one. And you are correct with the answer. The cash flow show. I thought you just, wow. I thought you just head fake me right there. You're like, (laughs) you're correct. It was a good one, but it was wrong. Your answer was wrong. No, you were you were totally awesome. on the money today. It is the cash flow show. Although the other ones do sound like they would have been it. I think I would have been stumped by that. Yeah, I think if um, this one wasn't such a nice name, I would have gone with the other ones because of the, you know, they had those psych psychology, psychological tricks, which is yeah. fitting for the clip we had. But didn't work. Once again, stumped you. So that's well, for first. Sorry guys, tough act to follow. Seeing as there's only three of you, I can stump you again, Max. Just don't forget that. Okay, so the episode we just listened to a clip from is called Public Accounting, Maintaining Compliance, Leadership Development, Dragon's Den slash Shark Tank, Balance Sheets, Tech Stacks, Kira Wisman. It's a bit of free association for you. And here's our show description. Hello, and welcome to the Cash Flow Show in association with... PRMS LTD. I'm your host, Clayton M. Koch. The Cashflow Show is the radio show disguised as a podcast. During every episode, we'll be talking to a business owner and entrepreneur and hearing the tales of the origins of their business, their successes and failures, and their future in the business world. As well as asking for their best piece of advice. We ask our guests to pick a book, a film, an album, or single to get to know their tastes and what they enjoy in their spare time. So, if that works for you, welcome to the Cash Flow Show. There you have it. Nice. I think that's cool that they talk about like books, movies, and music in there. Because, yeah, you can learn a lot about somebody from what they listen to or enjoy in their free time. Yeah, I always love those bits. And now I want to know <clears throat> what the, I want to know the mute, the album and book that this person would choose. Just because it's one of those, it's like, when they when you organize it like that, it's just like now I need to know yeah. who is this person. Tell me the book, their favorite book. But um, yeah, it sounds like a good show. I, and we've been we've been tricked into listening to a radio show. That was an interesting <laughs> part of the description, but that's fine. I mean, nothing wrong with that. Radio is just lower tech podcasting, as far as I'm concerned. So you that's know, they want you to think. Tech. That's what they want you to think. Okay. I didn't realize there was a conspiracy going on. Maybe this Five guy's things, favorite movie radio is the X-Files want movie. You to know. <laughs> there it's you have radio. it. Yeah. Big radio and got us again. Video killed the radio star, but radio tricked the podcaster. That's the saying, right? Yeah. So very cool. I appreciate the artwork for the episode. Just very clean to the point. And yeah, I really do wish the clip was about the movie or book because I'm I'm actually like so curious now about this for this person. That's so they get us. Big radio knows how to reel us in. Now we're Big hooked. radio knows how to Big get radio. us listening by talking about everything but radio. Anyway, let's jump into our next clip. Christy, you're up at bat. You know how this works. Yeah. Cover your eyes, we play a clip, and then I try to stump you. Like with a literal stump. You will stump me. Yes. I like literally come to your house with a giant stump. I mean, when I was living in the U.S., you would see fourth, fifth generation Asians who don't even speak any Asian language anymore. They would grow up with English only because they're already so far away from their immigration origin, right? And that's something you don't really see yet here in Germany because I think the immigration history is just a little bit younger. I would say that's kind of what's striking to me. 
And my partner is from the UK, so I spent quite some time there as well. And what's striking to me is that when you take the subway, it's super, super diverse. You're all types of languages and, and all of these things. And also here, you have multi-generation immigration happening already for a very long time. So you have kind of the fact of time and the fact of amount of different cultures and people mixing with each other, which I think accelerates the part of, of integration. And here in Germany, yeah, we are far behind than the current political situation. I don't think. Okay. There's our clip. And Christy, here are your options for today. Number one, cultural cracker. Number two, you rice me up. And number three, growing up Asian European. I'm going to go option one. Okay. Is there a, a reason for that? I like the name. Yeah, I could see that. It has good alliteration. It's and good it, you alliteration. Know. I'm a fan of crackers. Who isn't? Who doesn't enjoy a nice saltine? Yeah, no, yes, saltines. <laughs> you picked the worst cracker. More of a Ritz I'm, man I'm, myself, but you I'm do like, you. Yeah, like I'm a Triscuit <laughs> guy, man. Come on. Oh my God, everyone's you just ganging like up on me today. You would just love a saltine, wouldn't you? Yeah. The well, I'm, worst. I'm an old man. What can I say? Like, maybe the last show shouldn't have asked people what their favorite like movie was. It's like, what's your favorite type of cracker? And if someone says saltine, it's like, get out. <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you have with a soup on a nice rainy day? In a world of pretzel, the flips, the Toll House pretzel flips, you pick saltines. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a sucker for a saltine. Sue me. Don't sue me. I don't. I don't have legal counsel. Okay. It's like lowercase salt, the cracker. <laughs> yeah, literally. Have you met me? I have a salty <laughs> personality. <laughs> All right, I'm locking it in. Option one. Okay. Cultural cracker is incorrect. Yeah, you know what? I, you know what? Anger. Listen, it's okay. It's okay. When you're at the bottom, everything is looks looks fine. <laughs> Weirdly zen of you. The correct answer was you rice me up. And what? yeah. <laughs> I that Actually, was my last guess. I was like, there's no way. I had to peek at the clip because I read that earlier and I had to be like, this isn't. This isn't actually. A, nope, it is. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, I feel riced up a little bit. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what it means, but I'm feeling riced. We we can have what that is, on the record. The play on words of. I think it's actually like, because it's Asian American. It's it's rice. Rice. No, like, I get you, know, I, you crack me rice? up like you oh, rice me up. So the, and that's you where you got the up. cracker from. Okay. No. I didn't take yeah. it so literally. I was like, <laughs> like a like a cracker, like code, like you're cracking the code, like cultural cracker. Oh, oh okay, okay, yeah. all right. I didn't Should've mean to start saltine. this like debate over <laughs> how horrible saltine is. For a <laughs> no, I, they they fooled me with their name, um, and I'm again at the bottom. It's comfortable here. I've built furniture, and this is where I'll be. I love that for you. Meanwhile, I'm getting all of the slander. I feel like I just told you guys I don't believe the moon landing happened or something. That's where I'm at emotionally. Look, I can understand that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> A true southerner. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Stanley Kubrick handled that. Got it. Got gotcha, you, Jesse. Um, right. So the clip we just listened to is from the episode Dr. Sophie Chung on her Cambodian Chinese heritage, systemic biases, and notions of success. And here's our show submit our show description. <laughs> My brain doesn't work anymore. You Rice Me Up is a podcast about Asian Europeans from all walks of life. It covers their stories and passions, ranging from their cultural identity, music, food, and art, to dating, careers, and much more. It's for anyone who wants to learn more about the stories, lives, and perspectives of Asian Europeans. People you don't necessarily hear a lot about in the media. Follow at you rice me up dot podcast on Instagram for updates on new episodes. So there you go. I'm surprised they needed a dot for that. That's just Listen, the dot is handles on Instagram. I have a lot to say about this. This is why we are headliner dot. <laughs> for anybody that doesn't know, follow us at headliner dot app on all social medias. But anyways. Fair enough. So there you go. Cool artwork. I love like that 
the very minimal illustrated style. You see it on books a lot nowadays. So it has a cool cover. And I'm also just a sucker for a good border on stuff. I feel like more things should have borders on them. So good artwork. 10 out of 10. Up next, Jesse. You can go next if you'd like. I could skip to Max if you feel like maybe walking back some comments you made about saltines. Nope. Okay. You're just nope. covering your eyes. Put me That's in fine. there. Put me okay. in the bar. I don't know if you missed this the last time, but you can stay at the Christmas Story House in Ohio. If you're ever interested in, the, in a nice snowy winter, uh, you want to, it's an Airbnb, you can stay in the Christmas Story House. Yeah. Tony? I, don't, I think I need to make that happen. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to add that to my list of things to do. Honestly, Tony and his family I did it. Do that. Tony and his family did it, and they got, like, the bunny pajamas. And they stayed. They stayed in the house. They they said they they said it was awesome. I feel like Tony had those before they even stayed in the house. Well, yeah. I mean, he just grabbed. He's like, "Oh, bunny pajamas, okay." Second drawer. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Which, the only thing I hope is that the bumpuses are still around, and those dogs get to run through the house. I mean, the bumpuses are a, a key. Bumpuses. I mean, it's been it's been a lot of years. Buddy. Buggers. It's, it's been a lot of years. So. Are <laughs> right, you know what else we got? We got a shot here, Todd. Oh, we have I'm getting a shot here. Wait. A shot of what? Like, <laughs> what, what's that, Jesse? They said, wait. And then the clip ended. And I was like, <laughs> are we still waiting? Yeah. I'm so intimidated by how that ended. Like, they're talking about a shot. And I'm like, okay, of what? Tequila? A shot of, okay, whatever. We're going to move on. Jesse, here are your options. Number one, schnoz cast. Number two, Whiskey Talks, and number three, Friends Trying Their Best. All right, so how how does one spell a schnoz? S-C-H-N-O-Z-Z, -Z, cast. That is cast, as in, if y'all teamed up on me and beat me up because of my saltine thing, I'd be wearing a cast. All right, so one thing that y'all know I love to do on here is poorly explain statistical theories. Give me, give me it, man. So we all have heard, and I'm assuming, about the, the like the normal distribution, how it looks like an upside down U, and that yeah. it means whatever is in the middle is the most likely answer. So I'm going with number two since it's in the center. Okay. Whiskey talks. I would have come to that conclusion from the mention of shots at the end, but you do you. That's incorrect. It was schnozcast. I just, I, I don't know what a schnozcast is. Schnoz is a nose. nose. Yeah, it's like the old timey word for a nose. Oh, Look at I love that cover art. Yeah. That cover is so cool. Right? That's actually a great cover. I also And they have I'm, a border. Yes, they have a border. I wasn't even going to call that out, Alyssa, but thank you. I was just going to be like, I, I love the 1950s microphone and the uneven lines on the waves coming out of it. I just, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So wow. we just got noses. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, oh my God. <laughs> you ever notice that half the stuff Jesse says should just be printed on like motivational oh posters? Oh my God, I'll do what? it. I'll make them all. <laughs> Just like a black, a sepia photo of Jesse. It's slightly out of focus. And then the words, where I'm from, people just have noses. Colorized. <laughs> 1744. Colorized. Yeah, exactly. We're going to do that, Jesse. That's going to be your new TikTok project is you have to find your quotes and you have to make an inspirational quotes reel. <laughs> That's great. And the episode we just listened to was Love and Gratitude. Show description is... A group of close friends try their hand at podcasting with a few drinks, a plucky attitude, and free-flowing banter. We welcome audience participation, reading listener emails, and taking calls on air from friends with hilarious stories to tell. We swear from time to time, but it's only in that way that accentuates the joke. Join us while we learn about the finer points of podcasting, the fun of storytelling, and the peculiar ways in which whiskey always rears its ugly head. So I guess that's what the shot was. Um, also, swearing from time to time in a way that accentuates the joke. Unfamiliar with the concept. I'm from New Jersey. We basically were born saying the seven words you can't say on television. So. What about you have Sopranos? It. What about the Sopranos? They say all the words. And yeah, they New say Jersey. everything. They're HBO. HBO. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? David Zaslav doesn't know. Anyway. 
So I'm, I got to know, like, I got to find these people. I got to know what the nose is about. <laughs> well, you, you could send them an email. They said as much. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah, Jesse, you're like, I'm going to track them down. It's like, oh, they use Headliner. They could probably just yeah. reach out. We could probably just search the show name and ask them. Or like, I could just like give you the email because they gave us their email when they. I mean, like, are, are they? Okay. Do they do like smelling notes of the whiskey? Do they? Do they just uh, like? I gotta oh, know how the nose at comes at why, into this. Yeah, why schnoz cast? You just can't get past the. I can't. The nose is called a schnoz. Is that a? Is that from? A different language. I think just, it's. Can someone it, give me the origins? I feel like it's like a New York thing. Yeah, maybe it's just Jewish. The, Yiddish, I think. Yeah, it sounds. Yeah, Yiddish. I think it's like. It's just I one of those old timey words that, like, you know, people say in movies where they have transatlantic accents. Yes. You know, get out of the way, or I'm gonna deck you in the schnoz. That, yeah, that kind of thing. It's like old timey. It's schmuck. It's like all um, that. it is. It means nose. 1942 from Yiddish. Oh, there you go. Nailed it, Noixel. From German schnoz, snout muzzle, which is related to Middle English snoot, compared snoot. to schnauzer. Love that word. <laughs> wow, there I you didn't go. Know that. That's pretty interesting. Schnauzer. Yeah. The schnauzer. There's a that you can learn so much random stuff about like language. Like apparently, the word hello comes from like howdy, which comes from how do or how do ye. So yeah, just following like. The etymology of a word is weird. Anyway, so, do ye the new cacao? <laughs> Technically, the old one. That's what they said back in like the 1700s. Like, how do ye? Well, how do we get to cacao? How did? What's the evolution of how well, do a bird, ye cacao? A, a bird started saying hello, and instead wow. of freaking out, people just ran Parents. with it. Yeah, I think you um, just let me come up with something, and I was tired. I think that's the etymology of cacao. <laughs> There you go. So we've all gone now. So we get to do it all over again. And now, hopefully, some of you that may have gotten it right, not going to name names, Max, are going to get it wrong. Maybe. So you know how this works. You just you cover your eyes and you get it wrong. All right, let's do this round two redemption. Yeah, he, that's yeah, funny. I, I just got the, uh, the DVD at Tales to Chill the Bone 4 that I, I was in one of the shorts in that anthology of his and it, it was great. It's it's right here actually. So yeah. Man, it was a lot, a lot of fun. So I went out, we actually shot four movies out there that day. It's Christ Almighty. And then I mean, and then back to work during the week. Back to the day. Yeah, at some point, like anything I've been doing has been through voice and remote stuff. At some point I gotta get on a set and some, I, it's, see what I there's nothing do. like it. It, it. There's something about it, you know, just creating art and telling a story. And I can't wait to tell this story specifically. And I'm glad to have you guys as a part of it because I think you guys are going to like it. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to uh, add to it and, and see what uh, what we get, what we got ourselves into. All right. So here are your choices, Max. Number one. The Steve and Crypto Show. Number two, horror and more. And number three, children of the pod. Jesus. Uh, this is a seems like a specifically hard one. Yeah. Like well. Sound like they were talking about like uh, PAing on a film set. So I don't know how crypto gets into that. Children of the pod. Everything's a podcast, so nothing there. And horror, I mean, okay, well, I'm going to guess the second one just because maybe they work on horror movies. That's literally all I got to go off. So let's just roll the dice on that. The dice have fallen off the table. Oh, God, they've spilled into somebody's drink, and he's drinking. Oh, he's choking on it. You're wrong. It's the Steven Crypto show. Damn. How did they get yeah. from crypto to film sets? I guess they... <laughs> I guess that's their their side cryptos their side gig or something or film sets yeah, side gig. Maybe we were only listening to the Steve portion of the show. You know, maybe like halfway yeah. through every episode, it just becomes a crypto thing. And they probably Wait. just give live updates on the meme cryptos, like your Doge coins and whatnot. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been rough in the crypto market, so maybe they're they're going back to their their old gigs. They're going back to their uh, roots, being roots, Steves. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, wait, am I missing what? Am I missing something with the Steves? It's just because it's called the Steven Crypto Show. Uh, if it's not about crypto, I'm assuming this is Steve. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, <laughs> I wish Steve well. No, maybe he's doing well now because crypto yeah. got some Bitcoin action going. So good for you, Steve. There you go. We don't even know if this is Steve because the episode that this is from is titled Kevin Duffy. So yeah, <laughs> we're just going to move on through that. Here's the show description though. We're casually talking all things pop culture, horror, entertainment, horror, art, music, horror, collectibles, and more while providing an outlet for creators to promote their projects. Did we oh, mention we like, like horror? It's like crypto, like cryptic. Is it just like accidentally named like the? I don't. I yeah, I don't thought. think it has anything to do with like cryptocurrency because they're it's what like a cool zoology podcast. Yeah, cryptozoology. Like, so we're talking about Mothman. Mothman. Ah, Mothman. that makes sense. Champagne. Um, <laughs> yeah, Yeti. that took me for such a loop. I feel like if you name anything crypto, I'm just going to think about the like digital coins, which but... is valid. I, I I always thought people say like cryptic or something instead of crypto when it's not it's, the currency. It's crypt. It's a crypto for currency. It's supposed to be like cryptid. Yeah, those are the critters. Yeah. Also, they yeah, mentioned not, like yeah. tales of something. So maybe we just didn't hear it, but maybe he was talking about like tales of the crypt in the beginning. I don't well, know. I guess the horror thing. I mean, it sounds like they it, my I was wrong for the right reason. I'd say. So I don't know. I'm going to demand like a quarter of a point because I said maybe they're PAing on horror movies, which yeah. sounds more right now that I'm seeing the horror show like cover art here and nothing about Dogecoin or Bitcoin in there. So it's just, you know, you name anything crypto these days, people are going to think you're talking about the currency. So yeah. that, that's on me, I guess. Or I don't know. Maybe it, I was set up to fail. It was an unwinnable round. And some people, some of the audience will want fair redemption, but oh, we'll let them decide. Max, I don't know what you're talking about. I only told you to get it wrong right before we started. <laughs> That's right. I, I took a dive. Big radio sure. strikes again. I got some pale. Uh, take a hit on that one. <laughs> there you have it. Moving on. Christy, would you like to go next? I, I feel like I don't have a choice. You really don't. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go. While I get this queued up, I would like to add something for the crypto point. Their podcast art has a bunch of robots on it. So do with that. There you have it. What you will. Okay, okay, close your eyes. And I think some of his stories really helped me understand my own upbringing better. And that was certainly not planned or expected, but I'm really grateful. And Ludi taught me to be aware of how I am a conduit of all the different things that society has indoctrinated, like racism, but also to question it. I think in each of these conversations and in varying ways, it's really taught me that change has to start with me first before I try to change anything else. And I have to tell you, I absolutely love this, guys. And for anyone who may be wondering, yeah, they're just three great people. Okay. There's our clip. Woo! And here are your choices, Christy. Number one, reppin'. Number two, all things representation. Number three, representation and more. I'm going to go number two, all things rep uh, all things representation. Okay. You are woefully mistaken. The correct answer was reppin. No! What? Is it with an apostrophe, at least? Oh, no, um, there's no. not even an apostrophe. No, there isn't an apostrophe. So sorry. Uh, come on, you guys. <laughs> the episode we just listened to that clip from was the reppin wrap-up for 2023. Our show description right. is Reppin, about all things representation. 
insightful conversations with notable people from all different backgrounds and professions, people you think you know. They'll share their stories and experiences, and you'll find out who they really are, what they stand for, and you'll find out what they represent. So, sorry, Christy. Although you kind of got it, like, right, almost. I mean, the first sentence was all things representation. And I'm like, you know what? It is all things. Repping is part of that. Yeah. It is all things. Yeah. So, yeah I mean, you know, I'm right inside. I'm right inside. I'll silver line myself. <laughs> okay. There's your inspirational poster. <laughs> Actually, I think it should be the thing you said earlier where it's like, I'm already at the bottom, so I'm just comfortable here. <laughs> yeah, dude. Listen, it's 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 not lonely down here. Let me tell you. It's there's there's a lot of losers just like <laughs> me, man. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Failure has company, Christy. Yes, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Congratulations. I love that for you. Good good artwork from the show. Very clean. It looks like uh is that like a city or a sound wave? Is it both? It looks like it's both. City of sound. City of sound. You got a nice little JJ Abrams lens flare going through it, and you got the words reppin written in something that vaguely reminds me of the font from Purple Rain. That's just where my brain goes, though. So cool. Now, Jesse, you're up to bat again. Let's see if you could get this. I'm ready. You want people to be part of your team. And that has to also come out in your communication. That it's got to be not all about me or you. It's got to be where there's a bigger picture to everything. And where it can all be interwoven. Isn't that what we talk about legacy? Is that what we talk about future? All of this plays a large part in how you communicate. And as you know, I always performed better, whether it was a ball game or a chess tournament or anything, if I had people rooting for me. Some times when you fill up the room with people, you would think that you would do better if nobody was watching you. And yet, it's just the opposite. When you get encouragement and you have people in the stands that are rooting for you, I'm one of the people that rise to the occasion and perform better. And if that's the case with me, maybe that's the case with a lot of other people. It depends how the encouragement comes from the other people. Okay. Very cool. Actually good advice too, by the way, like, you know, not, not bad advice by any stretch of the word. Anyway, your choices for today, Jesse are good advice for the pot. I mean, nobody encourages us. We just get actively discouraged <laughs> by each other. By yeah. Each other. So we got to right guys. I'm here by announcing that we're just, we're just, I'm sending everyone saltines. Okay. Moving on. Your choices, Jesse, are number one, better call daddy. Number two, phone a dad. Number three, hey, dad, I have a question podcast. All right. Um, I look, we all know we want it to be number one, so I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> okay. I want number three. I actually want none of them because I had an idea for a podcast that these titles reminded me for, reminded me of. So, you know, anyway, Jesse, your choice, Better Call Daddy, is correct. Yeah. Also, <laughs> all of these except one of Christie's have been won. Yeah. Are, have they really? I yes. didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I we, didn't care to mix it up at all. Can we just like take a pencil away from Jesse? Like when got too many, you can't take them all. Oh no, <laughs> well, he's wearing a I bandolier know. of number two pencils. <laughs> I noticed that they were all the same, so I did like copy and paste one because I was like, I don't want more Christy. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, you got it right. Better call Daddy is correct. And in case anyone was wondering, oh my God, he has a pencil. I wasn't joking. I'm, I got the receipts. Oh, God. The paper says I, have, I still have paper. Yeah. That's yeah. How <laughs> Nifty. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Better Call Daddy is correct. The episode it's from is called Think Faster, Talk Smarter podcast host and author Matt Abrahams. Matt Abrams. Sorry. It's, uh, JJ's cousin. Yeah, JJ's cousin, Matt. Our show description is Better Call Daddy is for people who love stories. Hosted by the talented Rena Friedman Watts, everyone from influential players to phone sex workers are, folk are featured on the show. Nothing is censored here. 
Each episode, Rena will interview a person of interest, and her father will chime in with his advice afterwards. My dad has been a, my guiding force my whole life. There's nothing that he doesn't know, and I want to share that with the world. That is so wholesome. I thought this was Rena's podcast. I've I've worked with them some before, so they I can I've listened to many of these episodes. It really is a great podcast. They give great advice, so I can personally recommend this one. Okay, there you go. That is really cool, and I love the premise for it. It's basically I, my friend and I came up with a podcast idea called "I'm Not Your Father," but where two people who aren't parents mm. just give people advice. So it's kind of kind of similar in its own way. Anyway, really cool. Love the artwork. Just a nice illustrated style. Even like yeah, the little signature so cool. in the corner. Yeah. I love this artwork. <laughs> it, it's like a genie coming out of the phone. It's really, <laughs> really awesome. Yeah, it, it's wonderful. So there we have it. I think only two of I think only two of the six clips were guessed correctly today. So I'm okay with that. That's a 66 fail rate. I can live with that. We don't do encouragement in this house. Another little fun fact for you. Cats sleep for 66% of their life. There you go. So if, if a cat well, lives for 15 Alyssa, years, it is only conscious for five. Alyssa, he timed it. I mean, he definitely just has a timer and he's been checking on this information. That's how. Did you, you learn don't know how many cats I've been following week? for the last 15 years. <laughs> Just a cat going down an alleyway and like a trash That's... can moves, it checks and it's Jesse with a timer. And a pencil. That's why he has a pencil on the he's... paper. He's yeah. like, yep, 15. He's not even looking at the today. timer. It's every time the timer ticks, he's writing something on a piece of paper. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, We've learned a lot about everybody today. Jesse follows cats and alleys, and apparently it's a cardinal sin that I like saltines. Thank you for it's playing, It's not that you everybody. like them. It's just that it's your your favorite. It's, you went to it. It's That's where you landed on first. <laughs> Out of a sea, a literal ocean of crackers. Well, they couldn't be in the sea because they dissipate, Christy. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Well, I have to rethink a lot of things now. Thanks for playing, everybody. I hope everyone who's, you know, been listening to the show enjoyed it. We'll catch you next week where everyone will come at my throat when I reveal my favorite type of potato chip. There is a right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>